Hello and welcome back to part 2 of the Dalit Amberfin Workflow Engine tutorial. In this episode, we will explore the various stencils you will get with the entry license. We won't really go into the configuration of these just yet, we will cover that in a later episode. So like we saw in the previous episode, we can access all the stencils in the left hand panel of the designer window. For any workflow, the first stencil you will use is a start event. There are a number of start events to choose from and you can find a description of each by clicking on the information icon. The most commonly used start event is the first one in the list called start event, which allows you to start a workflow from the workflow engine interface or via the RESTful API. The second most common one is the watch folder start event, which will trigger the workflow when a specified file format is detected in a determined folder. Other start events include start with parameters, which allows you to trigger the workflow using the API and send advanced transcode API parameters. The start timer event allows you to specify when the workflow should begin. The next section of stencils are the gateways, exclusive, inclusive, and parallel. To implement your business rules, you will need to implement some logic to make decisions. In the workflow engine, the logic and decisions are implemented using the gateways. These gateways allow you to run processes in parallel, in series, or conditionally, depending on the applied logic. These follow the BPNN version 2.0 standard, so if you type them into your search engine, you will find lots of additional information. Let's make a quick example to better explain how these gateways are used. In this example, I want to start a workflow from a watch folder and then perform two transcodes in parallel. The first stencil I need is a watch folder, followed by a parallel gateway. Then I will add two transcode tasks and connect them to the parallel gateway. An important thing to remember here is that we need to use another parallel gateway after our parallel process before we move on to the next part of our workflow. So I'm going to connect up another parallel gateway after the transcode tasks. If that's the end of our workflow, we would add an end event. If you're using one of the conditional gateways, inclusive or exclusive, and you want to implement some logic based on the file formats coming in, you would need to know all about your media. So I'm going to jump ahead slightly and show you the analysis stencils. The Analyze Media stencil will interrogate the incoming media files and give you access to information like resolution, frame rate, and codec, which you can then use to set a condition. Maybe if the file is HD, transcode to JPEG 2000. If it's SD, transcode to IMX. Analyze Media XML does the same job but also writes an XML output to a specified location. Analyze QCML is used to analyze the results of an automated QC activity so you can make further decisions in your workflow. We'll go back to the gateways in a later episode and build the complete workflow that includes exclusive gateways. The next section is all about boundary events. Boundary events allow you to start a subprocess based on an error in the workflow or if an activity is taking longer than expected. You can drag and drop a boundary event onto any task in your workflow and then create a subprocess. A good example of using boundary events would be if, say, a transcode has been running for longer than expected. We have the choice of interrupt or non interrupt, so we can choose whether we want to stop the long running process or to leave it running. If I drag and drop the non interrupt boundary event onto my transcode task, I can then connect the boundary up to an email notification. and then to the end event. This would allow an engineer to be notified to go and investigate, but it wouldn't stop the workflow. Next on the list is text annotation in the artifacts section. This is a useful tool to annotate your workflow design. Maybe you are collaborating on the workflow design and you want to add some information for your colleagues. To use the text annotation, just drag and drop anywhere on the canvas, link it up to the task you want to annotate, and write some text in the text field under properties. The next set of stencils included in the entry license are the Dalit Amberfin Dark Transcode stencils. We have two to choose from, one called Transcode, which allows you to simply transcode a file to any transcode profile you have already configured in Amberfin Dark, and Transcode with Parameters. Remember earlier we talked about the Start with Parameters stencil? Well, if you're using that start event to provide advanced transcode API information to the workflow, maybe to reroute the audio layout or burn in a logo, you would use the transcode with parameters stencil. 
The next set of stencils are the transport stencils. All of these, with the exception of the S3 transport stencils, are included in the entry license. These allow you to delete, rename, move, FTP, or copy any file in your workflow. The last set of stencils I'm going to talk about in this episode are the QC stencils. The QC stencils are included in the entry stencil set, but you will need to have a QC unifier and corresponding plugins licensed with your Dalit Amberfin system for them to work. You will see that there is one for each of the QC integrations, so you should be able to drive your chosen AQC system from the workflow engine. That's all for this episode. Join me in part 3 where we will go through the stencils included in the advanced stencil set. To find out more about our products and solutions, please visit www.dalit.com. If you find the video helpful or have a suggestion for future tutorials, you can tweet us using at Dalit Academy or email us using academy at dalit.com.